Well, if you've been paying attention in the news or cinema lately, it's going to be probably hard to ignore the debacle that's going on here with the Jada Pinkett Smith and her attempt at a racist Cleopatra, which she called a documentary, which has given a lot of people problems just on the overhead. If you wanted to call it a racist fiction fantasy, you could, but there almost needs to be a category for that now with all the other films that have been made where they just keep interjecting a Bantu type people into a world they were not a part of and didn't even know existed. Kind of weird. It may be hard to filter uh, the Cleopatra thing out from other movies that have come out recently and just flopped with Star Wars, Indiana Jones, all kinds of things that have been happening here, but this is one that has some unique ability to it because it's really this racist thing that's being shown here, the beliefs of blacks that are caught up in a cargo cult and how that is working on their inferiority complex. And for a couple of generations now, I guess if you figure it since Michael Jackson's video on Remember the Time where he tried to show black people as Egyptians and they really tuned it up a notch Although if we really look into it, it was going on from about the 40s or so and, and up into that, maybe in the 30s. And uh, these beliefs where cargo cult people started writing books. It's a lot of those that have been interjected over time, but most people know that Jada Pinkett Smith, here we can see her, and of course she doesn't have the dark skin of an actual Sub Saharan Bantu anymore. I wonder how many of how much of that is bleaching. She says she has alopecia now, and that's the reason she doesn't have any hair. But if you look, she still has some hair. And somebody that's way into this and actually does a lot of black people wigging and weaves and all that type of thing said, no, she just put so much product on her hair, it all started falling out. She lost her edges and all this stuff and she's blamed it on alopecia as opposed to blaming it on her trying to make Caucasian mimicking hair hats. Chief Zelt exposed herself so many times it's not even funny, but one of the worst times at all was whenever she had her hair done up in a blonde, straightened out type of hair and during an interview tried to say, you know what really gets her and the lady was like, what? And she goes, white women with blonde hair. What? You're, you're trying to mimic it right now. You're a little bit lighter since the last time I saw you. Have, been, have you been bleaching? You know, Will's a lot darker than her, so how did that happen? How much admix does it take to make that much lighter? To put some milk in your coffee? But she really thinks that she's smart for having done this and what she's really doing is self-exposing black fragility and inferiority complex and something that I call a cargo cult mentality because when you look at the cargo cult people from World War II, which I did a video on about a month ago, I'd like for you to go take a look at it and it'll show you this type of mentality whenever they see an advanced people of course, people have made this statement that whenever a highly advanced people comes and visits a not as much advanced people or lesser advanced people, that some of these things that you'll have are indistinguishable from magic, if you think about it. You know, you, you whip out a cell phone and start talking and stuff. It doesn't even take that. You can go to a primitive people and carry a lighter, like an old Zippo lighter, and flick it and make fire and click it and turn it off. And flick it and make fire and turn it off. It's amazing. But Will's had problems and he tried to fix it by making another slave movie where he tries to be the dad that was there for black people, maybe to give an example or so on. And Jada thought that it might be a great idea for her to show a series on black queens of sub-Saharan Africa 
to help out the self-esteem of black people and she even tells her uh, her daughter to learn it and things like that what's crazily sad about that the, the Dahomey woman king came out not too long ago and it itself exposed blacks too for trying to push a narrative that ended up flopping in their face because they were ancient captures and slavers human sacrifice all kinds of things they tried to show them more advanced and all these super outfits and some kind of pseudo wakanda idea and it really flopped on them in fact the uh lady that was supposed to play the lead in it and had been in a couple of movies before then so she's the hot item turned it down and left that to the one that actually did play it and when you find out why she turned it down she said they're gonna try to lie to everybody and omit things out of it and so on so it's real exposing and people were really just waiting for Jada to try to come out with the next installment of Black Lies on video now and tear it apart and so what did she come with next well um, I'm gonna come with uh, we was we was Cleopatra and secretly the Egyptians some people don't catch this that everybody that they show as the Egyptians are some type of highly admixed Bantu looking people including Cleopatra herself who is a Macedonian Greek but I'm never gonna get anywhere if I don't get into this so let's look at what's going on now and how things are flopping as we see this again this was just oh pre Oscar slap not too long away at all isn't it oh if they could just go back to that moment right there they just have him cheating on or her cheating on him with her son's friends and he would not have slapped his fellow comedian in the face at the Oscars which has really lost all of its staunch at one time it was a thing like the height of society and Hollywood and all that and now it's it's really had a big taint somebody put a doo-doo smear right across it and then all of a sudden part started putting some graffiti on the walls there but you see that lady in the background in between the two heads that's the lady that said I'm not gonna do the woman king because uh, that's a bunch of lies but you can see how dark she is versus will and Will is almost as light as Jada is right there, but you can just look through pictures and find Will going dark and lighter and dark and lighter, and people have said he's bleaching and so on, and it seems like she doesn't let up whenever he does. But no hair hat this time. G.I. Jane, can't wait to see it. And of course, here they had this round table discussion about how she's cheating on him but calls it entanglements and that you know people said that well we'll condone this type of thing and then she even tells you in this round table thing here in just a minute that she's the only one that gets to make the decisions on whether or not she cheats on people and so on and it's like yeah i guess that wouldn't have been a family thing at all would it it's hilarious to watch this go on. She's not as light here, but has a different hair hat on. And here's Will like going, ta-da, see my wife, the racist. Lately, we found a few people out like Kevin Smith that tried to claim we was Egyptians and he was gonna have a concert in Cairo and they canceled it, gave his money back and said, don't come to Cairo. But it's been popping up like popcorn, but all of a sudden now it's in your face because it's not just some hidden colors videos made by Tariq Nasheed, which has always been self-exposing in a laugh and part of the We Was Kang's bullshit that's going to be a joke for generations and generations, even if they stop now because of what comes from it. And that we should never let go of the idea of here's what you were trying to say when you're all cargo cult mentality and oh we we just have an inferiority complex or we, or we just we, we don't know who we really were you know no you really know who you were and one thing's for positive you know that you weren't cleopatra but 
this attempt here is is really 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 self-exposing so as we go on here this guy here is the guy that she's been having sex with this is her questionable gender son's friend in a rainbowy pinky hair kind of thing but uh, that's an entanglement I'm sorry I misspoke and there she is again and here she is again so just in those three pictures we saw over ding 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 you can see quite a bit of shading and don't say I'm getting a tan it's not the way things work here but you can tell in Will's look in his eyes here there's something that just tells you oh my god I'm a cuck to this freak out thing and we're actually airing this out on national TV just to give you a background of the person that put out this type of information because a lot of people are like, what the fuck is this? But they don't know, well, who is this type of person? So now we can all understand that I'm guessing this is the way the Will Smith family thinks about things. Or he hasn't in any way come out and gone, no, 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 that's my wife freaking out. She uh, got off her medicine or anything. No, 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 nothing's being said like that at all. In fact, it looks like Will's trying to hide behind the corner of the house and not come out because... He don't want to have to deal with the bullshit with all the other bullshit that she's put him through so far. You can imagine. On one of those old slap videos and things, I, and, and, and uh, somebody made the mention, I wonder why he didn't slap Jada. And it, it, it yeah, well, uh, never mind. So, so she is myself and she's the one that makes the decisions on whether I'm going to cheat or not. And she's saying this right now. I don't even want to turn the volume up to hear it. It's kind of disgusting. And him going, yeah, that's the way it is. But she tells him that because she, she didn't feel anything for a long, long time, Will. Uh, basically trying to tell him you weren't doing it for me father of my children and everything else multi-millionaire super star da 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 she needs more oh wait there's some of that blonde-ish hair hat that's not what I'm talking about though she took that and made it stark blonde and then said that what she couldn't stand is blonde white women real self-exposing you can imagine any white person saying that in reverse And what people would try to think about it, but whenever blacks say things like this, we're just supposed to let that all fly by. Oh, that's just their jealousy and envy and awe. Oh, or I might be able to get some virtue singling points if I can do something about it. So, pretty disgusting. And here they are hitting knuckles, telling each other, bad marriage for life. I don't even want to talk about that. Let's just go. So here's something special. Here's the lady over here to the right, the one that denied the part on the Dahomey King thing, Queen King thing, whatever. We was queens. At the same moment that Will has just slapped Chris Rock, but now he's sat back down and he's like, keep my name out your mouth, basically. And what's funny is I was on a Chief X video not too long ago and they were talking to Horners and stuff and uh, lo and behold on came Mr. Misinformation Man. And of course what happened is not what he wanted to happen. Now I'll give you some background. He's some guy that knows and has been told and figured out although he was in the cult that blacks weren't in ancient Egypt. But then he tries to claim Bantu were Buddha because Buddha's got snails on his head. And uh, that's just so laughably disgusting. And then Chief X explained to him there's snails on his head. And he asks, well, when, who, who can we claim, Chief? Like, oh my God, how self-exposing. And then the guy from the Horners told him that he needs to keep their name out his mouth because they are not related and didn't know that existed. I.e., whenever you keep going, we was, we was Ethiopia, or we was, we was Nubians. And you go, no you're not, and you need to keep my name out your mouth because 
you're not. And you're self-exposing. You're trying to say, we weren't who we are. We were someone else. And you're pointing around at people. It makes you look like a clown on the world stage. And Chief X has used that statement quite a few times whenever he keeps showing these black people making up these jealous lies that other people just cut right through easily. And it looks, it makes them appear that they're trying to make themselves look like a clown because they've already been told it and shown it. But yet they're still trying to hand pick pictures and turn around and lie about it again because they can't handle the reality of the way that it really is. It's disgusting, but I'm hoping that things like this bring it out to light. It surely should because all of a sudden we're national TV with We Was Kings. In fact, we're not even claiming the Egyptians. They act like that's a given because all the Egyptians in her little show there are black and then the servants of those people are people that looks more like the ancient Egyptians. Oh, it's disgusting. To the point that they even show her and then Ptolemy himself, her dad, and they show that as a black man. And it's like, that was never a question. It was supposed to be Ptolemy, her, Cleopatra's grandmother. People are a little confused about one that they had in there. And what they're trying to do as blacks is go, well, a Bantu stuff snuck in somehow all the way from across the Sahara, just bigger than the United States and full of lions and somehow that even the way that the Egyptians looked at Nubians and all and so on that she tried to pull like well I just showed up and became a princess and apparently so much of a nobility I was selected by Ptolemy but in the movie here they try to show Ptolemy is black it, it's 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 disgusting because they realize it's the only way it really works is to just ruin it all in front of everybody and show that we're jealous and can't handle anything, but that that Horner definitely told, you know, black people, look, West Sub-Saharan Bantu are not any of us other people, so you need to keep your name out your mouth. So J.D. here thinking that she's all high and mighty and everything, and she's going to help out the black people that really need help, you know, like the ones that pray to a Caucasian Jesus. I believe both these people were looking at her wearing a hair hat. Recently, I did a couple of videos where I'm showing people actually out in the bush, pretty much living, not in colonized areas, that have gotten cell phones now and they're taking pictures of it. People are asking them questions and they're like, I'm looking all around when y'all doing your stuff. Where do y'all sleep at? And the girl turns around and goes, we sleep in the trees. I had an Afrocentric and somebody trying to lie and just can't handle the truth. I turned around and got on my first video of that and said, oh, she's just trying to joke and this, that, and the other. So. Weirdly, the next day, another one pops up where they said something like that, and I'm like, well, she's saying it too, huh? I click on it, and sure enough, she's telling you the same thing. And then trying to pretend it was a joke, like Sub-Saharan sub, sub would be showing you something as embarrassing like that, like it's just a joke for you to... Uh, it, it, it's disgusting. But she tried to make these movies to help out black people with maybe a black queen. Now see in this woman empowerment thing, this is all geared towards everything that's going on now and she could have done something great with it. Another guy's video that I watched, when he gets to this point talking about it, says, you know, you have many choices and he just flashes through like 10 or 12 black queens. Here's one and da da da, and here's one and da da da, and here's one, but you, you can't do any of those. And it's easy enough to, to do a little research like I do and end up coming up with a video and you'd go a little deeper if you wanted to make it a true documentary and surely not be omissive like the, the homie queen king woman king and you'd have to put it out right but then whenever you look at those 12 the guy put out you can only have something that happens much later after ad mix and so on that they actually are getting into a still a pre-neolithic state and all of this and they'd have to be lying to them anyhow or if they showed them the truth blacks would act like it was whitewashing it even if blacks were making it trying to show you no 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 this is the truth so jade is going to take a big l on this and this is just as bad as like undercooking your food or making something that actually is going to cause somebody to get sick in front of this chef guy here and he's throwing a little fit about it 
and it's not to be taken lightly. We have a professional restaurant here. You're trying to make people sick. What the fuck are you doing? But it's also like giggling about it, making fun, and so on. Oh, well, it's a lot darker than her here, but uh, so you had all these choices that you could have used, but you don't want to use something like that, like this black African queen here, because if you tried to show them riding horses and doing the things and then pick the dating, you'd have to go, well, this is well after Islamic domestication bias. Those are Islamic horses who actually got them from the Aryans in the Wayback Machine. Egypt didn't have them until the Hyksos came in with them in chariots and so on. But that's a Islamic saddle and these things going on. In fact, a lot of your accoutrements that you're wearing are not from your people. They're Islamic and even the swords and weapons there, all of a sudden you got metal going on. If we were to just take any of these pictures and take it back a thousand years, you'd be like, wow, there was a big change right in there, wasn't there? Well, where does that come from? They didn't just pop up like popcorn. Oh no, it, it works off Admix. And it goes back and goes back. But see, another thing about these, a lot of these tribes are from places well aware or well away from the Congo area. And then they have no attachment to them anyhow. So it's almost embarrassing to turn around and go, well, here are these black people that were real smart. Now it's not the Congoids. Da, 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 da. And they did all these things, but the Congoids didn't. This is also the same reason they have that problem where they pointed any person that's darker than a sheet of paper and start claiming them and don't want to talk about what really they themselves did. But there are a lot of choices given here, but they don't want to use those choices, and especially after the Dahomey thing. Who knows why? But they decided to pump out the Afrocentric lie as the second one that she ever put out is now it, it's not even we was Egyptians it's that Cleopatra might have been a Bantu oh yeah believe it or not yeah we're, we're gonna get to that here in just a minute this is him celebrating and you can see he's a lot darker than her but she and the whole family here look like they're slightly bleaching or a little light and there's the son whose friend she is apparently, uh, what's the word, entangled with. So that's everything's looking like a great fantastic to some people. No, no, it's not. And none of this should be clapped for. But if they were going to try to do this thing here and give you some black queen that did something from a, a mud hut or a dung hut or doing these type things and over embellished it, people were going to tear it apart anyhow. So. Some people are literally just saying, well, she didn't even want to embarrass us again with another Dahomey debacle. So she thought the best thing to do was right now throw in the idea that Queen Cleopatra of Egypt might have been a Bantu, as opposed to the reality of the Bantu didn't even know Egypt ever existed until way later. In fact, genetics says, yeah, kind of after it was all gone, that in the post-Roman periods, Genetics has stepped up to the plate here and just verified so many things and it becomes an undeniable truth as to who the ancient Egyptians were and blacks can't handle that. They pretend that they can't see it or just don't know and that they're still trapped in this cargo cult. It's disgusting, but here we go with that. But they could have chose all kinds of different black queens to pick, but she decided to say that she was quaint. And, she, and so there's a train wreck happening and it becomes one of those things where you, where you really shouldn't be watching this, but you can't keep from watching the train wreck happen because it's her and their own train and all it is is full of empty lies. So there's really not gonna be anything like Ohio happen. And we hope nobody gets hurt in the endeavor of trying to lie to black people and get them all wired up on a bunch of set of lies. Oh yes, a lot of black people have already come out already and readily mentioned that you're just, dog, oh, you're just full of shit with the whole idea. Oh, but I see you tried to sneak in all the Egyptian people are sometime, somehow Bantu too. It's real self-exposing, the train wreck. 
here she is, the train wreck. So her reasoning that she put out for doing so was that she said, we don't often get to see and hear stories about black queens that are pre-Neolithic people, still tribal, having their titties hanging out, wearing a loincloth at best, because why? And then it was really important for me as well as my daughter to just for my community the unconscious community, to be able to know those stories because there are tons of them. Well, if there are tons, why did you try to choose a Macedonian princess of Egypt, but, oh, here's the secret, but make all the Egyptians band to somehow too, and even Ptolemy, because it wouldn't work any other way. Oh, it just gets disgusting. We're not through yet, though. So this is supposed to be her, her judgment on the idea that, well, I'm making this and they're giving me a lot of money to make it, so I'm not going to even show a sub-Saharan queen, which, again, there are lots of them. Of course, you look at these and you go, now that's highly admixed and some of her accoutrements are conspicuous and so on. And then there's stories behind that and then the origin idea and then what were they doing? Well, the earliest admixed blacks that got the bigger brain from it were going around and capturing their own people well before any white man ever showed up, but they can't handle that idea. You see, just until last week, they believed that the only slavery that had ever happened in the world was against blacks. There wasn't a Barbary Coast slave raid or any of that. There wasn't slavery in Caucasians and Oriental people with each other too. Even Amerindians and so on else and everybody really. But no, it's just all about them. But this lady with her softer hair and admix type look, I wonder if that's the way that person really even looked when they try to give them that kind of idea. It just looks like they're taking somebody and putting black face on them, brown eyes, and then red lipstick covering up their at least one brown lip. Anyhow. Would she have looked possibly more like this? Because doesn't that look a little different than the one we were just looking at? Well, one of those is a more modern interpretation. And the other one is an actual picture of somebody. This is the African queen. You won't find a hair hat or anything of like that going on, but yeah. But then if you look into her story and what she was doing, the slave trade and everything else, I don't want to make a movie about that. I want to make a movie where we was Egyptians and call it a documentary. There are so many of these. And it might have been interesting to some people, and especially black people, if you would have had something on there that they could latch on to perhaps. Like you said, you wanted it to be about sub-Saharan queens. And then you made a movie about white people and tried to stick blackface on them. Terrible when we hear all of that in a reverse way is, oh, oh, so bad, so bad. They try to act like Egypt was whitewashed somehow because they showed Elizabeth Taylor on there. Well, they no, they did have pale women and red ochre males, but the, were the males really that red ochre? Well, it's amazing how tan you can get it's also amazing how light a Caucasian you can get, too. And genetics has stepped up the plate again and said, no, you're not pulling something. In fact, the local population, because of late admix, Arabic infusion, and other things, they only have really a 1% match with the ancient Egyptians, mainly with the Coptic-type people. And the people that actually have connections is all this old Anatolian, ancient Anatolian DNA, that we've checked from way back in, they're matching that out. Right, yeah, so the old Herodas and the Colchians kind of works out too, I guess, but then those people of ancient Anatolia and modern Europeans. In fact, when King Tut's full genome was done and so on with Akhenaten and figuring all that out, the women and men were G2 and R1B and MTTNAK and all of that, and you go, oh, well, if that's what it is, then yeah, the ancient Anatolians were those same people, and the 
Middle Easterners, of course, and they have blue eyes too, and then I'm modern Europeans, and of course, blacks are so bent on their lie there that they're acting like that's whitewashing to have actually at one time showed somebody like Yule Brenner or somebody like Liz Taylor even as Cleopatra. Well, secret be known, Cleopatra didn't have Liz Taylor's elegant and beautiful looks apparently. What added up, the, the lady was apparently a seven, but she carried herself like a nine, and she knew like five or six different languages, including the Bantu, or the, uh, not Bantu, uh, -uh including the Nubian troglodyte language. They actually mentioned that. So um, she was a polyglot and real extreme learned and actually the first one of the whole Ptolemaic dynasties that actually learned ancient Egyptian. The other ones had interpreters that knew it and they would just come and talk to them and then repeat it to them in Greek. They weren't gonna change in that way, but. They did other things in the Egyptian way because they were in Egypt and when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Blacks are having a problem doing that nowadays, so they're trying to do as the cargo cult Bantu, jealous, non-biblical recent primitives do, and it's like, oh, oh, all this is getting very self-exposing. We need to come out with a whole thing on this in a professional type of way that we can talk about who was where when and what goes back to who and who's Asilar man and then Iwo Liro and how does that fit with your idea of what you're trying to say and really get things situated back to where they're really supposed to be as opposed to some stupid pandering lie don't you think so they came out with this and they had her shown as she's uh, riding horses and doing these things and she's a super powerful woman making all these decisions. Oh, oh, the Romans, you know, and Caesar and Mark Anthony, they're just wimps and they don't know what to do, but she's got to lead them too. And she's a warrior. She fights with a guy with a sword and all this. And you're like, this, this ain't Cleopatra. You're trying to make some modern BS out of it and put in all this stuff that doesn't have anything to do with it. And if you called it a, if you didn't call it a documentary, it'd still be a joke. But because you called it a documentary, it's worse than a joke, and it's real self-exposing. So something like this is more what she looked like, and right up there in the corner above her ears, you can see that slightly auburn hair that they showed with it, and so on. And this looks very much like her. Now they're kind of in a sepia tone here and not giving any idea what color her eyes could have been. But a lot of people believe because she's Macedonian Greek, she should have brown eyes possibly, but just as easily had green or blue eyes. But one thing that she didn't have is any Bantu heritage. Even if you try to interject that her grandma may not have been the child of her grandmother but it might have been through a concubine and people look at that and they go well by her name and everything that might have been a persian and then all of a sudden we got a we was persians problem here again and trying to do that so how could you possibly interject that a bantu was even in egypt or knew that it existed well they can't but they're trying desperately you see and they didn't take a girl like that girl that was in the slap thing right there when I showed you that turned down the woman king and decided to go, well, let's go with one super dark that looks like that. Well, no, she might have been a quarter at best because her grandmother might have been a concubine and we're lying anyhow. So why don't we take a mixed Bantu girl and shove her in there? What? You can't make it have logic, but here it is. The woman came. Oh, she's a warrior. She's super powerful. She does all that. She's given the kids. She's done everything. And again, Jada Pinkett Smith and this nightmare. Yeah, it's terrible. And I, I watched a, a movie by this guy who's actually done a dissertation just a few years ago on this exact moment in history and the way things unfolded and so on. Yeah, and 
he he just ate this whole thing apart. It's weird, but he watched like, I don't know, five or six minutes of it, and then all of a sudden he stops, and you think, oh, you finally caught something. And he goes, well, there's only been one or two things that could actually pass or just let slide since the movie started. And now what made me stop it totally is they got to the point where da 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 and this didn't even happen, and da 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 <laughs> it's just, and then you go through the whole movie, and really he edited it. He didn't watch the whole movie and then stop it and talk it. He just gets to this one point and shows about five seconds ago. They're trying to show this crap right here, but this isn't what happened at all. And da da da, this doesn't happen at all. N needless to say that they have a Bantu in there are trying to interject that and everything anyway. And then there's one funny part whenever they show up and then she's counseling with all these people and he actually finally realized, oh, they're trying to con on the Egyptians too. The guy's like, so these are supposed to be the Egyptians? So it's gotten real bad and uh, it's gotten the worst ratings ever in the history of cinema that they've said and again I have to mount the note that we don't often get to see stories about black queens and it was real important for me as well as my daughter and just for my community to be able to know those stories because there are tons of them but instead of showing one that's got any kind of reality that anybody's going to agree with they actually turn around and try to go, we was Egyptians, we was Cleopatra, because my grandma liked that name. Yeah, I'll turn up the volume in a minute whenever she tries to say that and show you it right out. A little longer clip than they usually shows on to it, but talking about coming home for school and what our grandma said. So, you know, is this done for ratings? Is this done for controversy? Is this done for anything? Uh, no, actually, she was given the money to do 10, so she thought she'd at least waste one on, we was Egyptians, we was Cleopatra. Well, yeah, but we gave you the millions of dollars to, to make these about sub-Saharan queens while you're doing that. Oh, she's sub-Saharan. Well, we see that she is, but Cleopatra never was. So, joke on parade of course netflix doesn't really mind being the joke on parade if you've seen some of the tripe they've been putting out in the last few years so it's just weird let's look at this in a different way what if i was to turn around and say i want to show you the history of black musicians and you might start the first one off with Miles Davis, his incredible jazz work and so on. And, and, and people are going, ooh, now what's next, what next? And the next one, and they have Darius Rucker playing Elvis Presley. What? Well, that's what we're trying to look at right here is somehow interjecting a Bantu into Queen, Queen Cleopatra. Imagine if we did MLK and it was done by Tom Hanks as MLK. See, when you put it on that stage right there, all of a sudden, oh, oh, well, but you don't seem to think there's a problem here. Well, cargo cult, cargo cult. And it's like, that's even worse. It was all whitewashed. No, you're trying to blackwash it now. Nothing was whitewashed. History is history, but you've tried to play that little game. You thought you had a few statements. You got a special magic word. So this nightmare team came out and they've said quite a few different things on here. The lady on the right here is of course pandering and trying to get her virtue signaling points up. But she had made a statement that, well, why can't she be black? And what's hilarious is the, the answer to that statement is, why can't she be Macedonian? Oh. So this is just a nightmare, train wreck, keeps going, but, uh, Here's where the lady talks. Let's see what she has to say about her grandma when she was a kid and why she's a racist caught up in a cargo cult.
about what I was learning. No. We used to be stupid. I would come home and I would tell her about what I was learning. No, we're learning about the Greeks and we're learning about the Romans. And today we learned about Cleopatra. She learned about the Greeks and the Romans. And so in the historical time, whenever the Greeks had taken over the Levant and down through, and then the Romans came in. So that's neat. What else did she learn? Because that involves Africa, which was named by Caucasians. What's she gonna say? And I remember, clear as day, her saying to me, Charlie, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Like, don't get... So here we get to see some of the problems where it's passed down. I don't know if anybody's willing to believe that this lady's grandma was even learned had ever graduated school, knew anything about it, other than the fact that it's in Africa, it's Egypt, therefore it must have been us, the far west sub-Saharan Bantu people that didn't know Egypt existed. Yeah, that's what makes sense to them. I've had them try to tell me that it was black people all the way to right there at the pinch leading out, and then within 10 foot there's white people over there and it was all black people, and it's like, no, I Africa's named by and for endemic Caucasians. North Africa always was. Look up Caucasian race and now, oh, that's not valid anymore. Yeah, yeah, it really is still valid. It, it really is. And when we talk about history, then we're going back and then we're real, real valid. But if you look at it, they go all the way through the Horn of Africa, just swathing right over Egypt like, oh yeah, that's a given. That's in between North Africa and the Horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they also mentioned they were all over here, all the way over into India, all the way up into what we call China today, all the way to Russia, all the way across. People have figured out there's a Proto-Indo-European linguistics, which used to be called Aryan until after World War II, and then that had to change. But everybody from Sanskrit to ancient Irish, Scottish, and so on are all hooked up linguistically to Proto-Europeans, but that doesn't mean that the other two Shemitic and Hamitic languages that people used to go over that's hooked up to the people out of the Bible that landed in the Caucasus Mountains. Were three different people in any way. They were the same genetics of their parents. It even says in the Bible that Noah and his wife are perfect in their generations and everything. But black people have adopted the Bible, and believe it or not, now they blaspheme and say, we was in Bible. There's the black Hebrew Israelites that stand around on street corners and try to tell white people they're not in their own religion. It used to be this Bantu people. That's what it's all about. People that never had writing had a book somehow. It's terribly, disgustingly, hilariously sad. I don't know why they're showing here the hook up on Johnny Cash, but I guess it's along with that same musical idea where people think it's a good idea. Well, I guess one way to say it is there are places in movies that are like this that they say is a docudrama or things that are based on history and so on like that and not necessarily a documentary situation where they've embellished somewhat, put in some scenes that people go, I've read the whole thing 10 times. I don't, your scene's not in there. Well, it's a continuity thing or it's this, that, and the other. Or they embellish what people say or might have said and things like that. But that's not what we're talking about here now, is it? So, like this guy's showing here, somebody might try to use that as a defense. Well, in this one movie, they said somebody said so and so, and people are like, this, uh, so it should be totally okay to take Bantus and say that Cleopatra was a man. And it's like, no. Listen, in a documentary, it wouldn't, but it, no matter what, it really wouldn't be acceptable. It would be too self exposing, and it would show that you're real jealous over anything. And given the opportunity and money to make something about African queens, first thing out the gate you do is step in shit and then tell everybody it's fantastic. So, yeah, they embellish like, oh, he won by three and a half links, and then you look on the card where they wrote it down the day it happened, and it was like two and a half links. 
I guess it doesn't matter in the hill of beans on man of war or secretariat and what he did and how much he won by. I guess something could be embellished a little bit, but you know, if we keep doing that over and over, we end up not even anywhere near the reality where it is. But there are some embellishments are done, but that's again not what we're talking about, are we, Jada? So here's the high point we have so far. When it started out, they had 11% on the tomato meter and a 1% audience score. They rallied the troops. They rallied the troops and said, Afrocentrics, get out and, and sh try to make this not look so terrible. And so they got some of the critics that are geared towards pandering and virtue singling. And it's gone from 11 to 15. And now the audience score, which went from one to two, back to one, back up to two, is now at 3%. They have actually come out and said, this is the worst audience score since they've been keeping them of any movie whatsoever, any show, anything whatsoever. If they were showing people with explosive diarrhea, they would probably get a better audience score and maybe even tomato meter than this. It's disgusting and it's shit. Real self-exposing. And the Egyptian government has gotten in on it too and now they put a lawsuit out against them and from what I understand, they uh, made it illegal to show the movie in Egypt but it didn't cover Egypt, it covered the whole Mena area, which is Mediterranean in Eastern uh, Levant and all of that area in one because they are the same people. And uh, they said, we're not gonna allow that to be shown even over here in the cutoff. And then here's the thing now, from what I hear, they're actually trying to just turn off Netflix totally. It won't even be in our country anymore. There's too much messes. It's not like they have 10 great things and then this one's a mistake. It's more like they have 11 mistakes. Yeah. So that's not going to be able to go on. And what people have been saying about it is that now what we're doing is we're applying our modern racial constructs to the ancient world. And that's not correct. That's anachronistic, basically which means it's out of time or you're trying to apply something like, oh, the way we feel about this today versus the way people felt about it then. And instead of showing the then and realizing how far we come, you turn around and try to make it like, oh, back then they were doing this, they were doing that. And black people were involved. Which is totally anachronistic and wrong. You know, uh, in a guest column for Variety, the show's director, Tina Gavri, said her research on the Hellenistic era queen, who she writes was eight generations away from her Ptolemaic ancestors, led her to realize, check this, what a politi act, political act it would be to see Cleopatra uh, played by a black actress. So right here, she self-exposed and said, no, this isn't a documentary. This is a political act and so on. Now, her justification was just above that where she said she was eight generations from her Ptolemaic ancestors. That's a foolish, stupid statement because her dad was named Ptolemy. Her brother was named Ptolemy. They have numbers going all the way through them, and that Ptolemaic ancestors started eight generations before, but were growing constantly all the way through this time. In fact, they never did have influx even with the Egyptians, who were Caucasians with similar genetics. But they did that queen king kind of thing and actually had some incest to even keep that from happening. So why blacks are trying to push an issue that, well, it's a little ambiguous, and so somehow a Bantu might have got there somehow. Reality is saying, no matter what, they never did anything like that whatsoever. And if there was a possibility, it might have been a Persian queen, but it's impossible for it to have been a Bantu because Bantu did not know Egypt existed. So why do you have the whole cinema full of 
or the movie filled with Bantu Egyptians and a Bantu Cleopatra somehow. How disgustingly obvious. Got a love affair. Once a white man. Once two different white men. That's a great picture there. We'll try to stop it when we come back. Let's look at this picture here when we get to it. So here she is, all thoughtful, all this. So when we look at this, supposed to be the rear of it, all I see is a bunch of admixed blacks and one white guy poking in right over here, right there. And then another admix guy right in front of him. We'll call him white too. Um, but these are all admix quite a bit. In fact, probably the least admix there is a man over on the far left. And there are a bunch of light skinned blacks, heavily admix and so on. I mean, what are you trying to pull off here? Well, we want you to think that that's the way Bantu work. We can go right now, right to the Congo, and you'll find they've got a lot darker skin than anybody that's on here. And no, they don't have a habit of bleaching or wearing Caucasian mimicking hair ads or anything like that. Of course not. So here we have pictures of the phenotype of a few of Cleopatra's statues. And what they look like surrounding a Bantu woman who's highly admixed to even get that phenotype that's shown. For if you were to take one from an old African village or so on, like that black queen that we showed earlier they could have done a video on, it's hilariously sad what you're trying to pull off. Well, all situations, it's hilariously sad and self-exposing. And critics and everybody have been giving it a solid thumbs down, a boo. You get an L. Netflix gets an L. But worse than that, this man here has filed a lawsuit against them, against Netflix itself. And it might grow into Jada Smith or that corporation that's putting it out or doing so or whatever. And, and probably nothing will come out of it, but the guy's rich enough, he doesn't give a shit. He's not going to have these people come along and make stupid of his country. So he doesn't give a damn. And they're really literally trying to outlaw Netflix from Egypt or perhaps the whole MENA region. From what I understand, already this is not being shown. Apparently when this time slot comes up, it just goes to a blank screen for an hour and a half and then comes on with something else. He's demanding serious legal action against those responsible for making the documentary. He blamed the Netflix management team for its participation in this crime against humanity, in history, and everything else. It gets bad and real self-exposing. He also demanded a thorough investigation of this and a discontinuity from Netflix's service in Egypt. Egypt. The complaint submitted against Netflix stated that most of what Netflix platform displays do not conform to Islamic and societal values and principles, especially Egyptian ones. Whoops. So this is not just some, whoopsie, I caught my foot on fire, but the whole world is a little involved with you and your stupid. Oh, and they probably love that. I'm on the world stage now, self-exposing and lying, and everybody's calling me and my whole people a joke because of what we're trying to lie about. Look at me, look at me, I'm so fucked in the head. Mental issue, jealous problem. Man, it's got to be devastating for blacks in America that have been trying to pull off this BS, have it turn around and just shoved right in your face. How sad this has all been and you've just wasted generations and everything. And all oh, you've been sitting around all day long just mad at Whitey. 
the whitey that's been propping you up and teaching you everything that you know. Look around you. Everything that's around you is all made by Caucasians. And it's the things that you want and like, like shoes, cars, or anything else. It's amazingly sad whenever you turn around and you go, here's reality. Here, oh, wow. Yeah, she says that she blames white supremacists. See, here we got another magic word we think we'll throw out there. See if I can do that. I'll just wait till it comes out. When they start to freak out, I'll say white superiority, and then things go the way. If I have to later, I'll mention climate change and stuff like that. But she blames white supremacists on her flop and Netflix docudrama. Well, white supremacists aren't going to watch your movie. Well, they probably watch it more than these other people are, apparently, just so they can get a laugh out of it. But what, what, why is it going to be white superiority instead of blacks trying to pretend that they're superior and in the middle of an inferiority complex and turn around and lie about history and never point the finger at yourself or look at yourself and go, look how fucked up you are by your own hands. Nobody's been leading you down this road. You want to go down it. It has one of the worst audience ratings in U.S. television history. That Patricia Dixon there is a black woman telling you this. That she complains it's white supremacy that's holding her back. It's the man. Well, here she is in her bright uh, strawberry blonde hair. Yeah, later she makes it all blonde. And then in the middle of the blonde, she tells her the people that really piss her off are blonde Caucasian women. And this is foolishly stupid. The guy in this wants to tell you that the comparison is whenever they made this movie that's about the life of a gay man and they tried to say that straight men are the problem. And the straight men didn't want to go see a movie about a gay man, so that ends up being a problem. Kind of like the Bud Light debacle, where beer drinkers and hell raisers don't want you to turn around and take a guy to cut his dick off and put him on the bottle pretending to be a woman because now all of a sudden the farce is gone and we realize this is some shit pretending to be a beer showing you a man on it who's pretending to be a woman what the hell is going on in the world today but yeah this guy here he may you know he was in a movie and it was about this gay guy and all this stuff and, and his trials and tribulations. But whenever that came out, they turned around and said that it was all because of white superiority. And here you can see somebody making a joke about it and stuff. And, and, and that they have a week. And uh, when, when is lesbian week? Oh, well, you got a whole pride month. And isn't all this just stupid and foolish? Yep, Jada Stinkett Smith and her sidekick, Boo Boo. Where the woman on the right is just trying to get virtue signaling points and probably has gotten into that white hate group idea. And she, together with Jada Pinkett Smith and a couple of other stupid people, and this lady's a professor at a college known for Afrocentrics, who wants to tell you where she gets her knowledge from is not from all academia, which is what they need to be if they're gonna be a professor. She got her knowledge from her racist, low IQ grandmother that probably couldn't point in Egypt on a globe. And if she could, she'd still be lying. Oh boy. So this has been a nightmare and uh, this is really an upswing, guys. Or this is an upswing because up until now, we had an 11% audience score and a 1%, oops, it bumped to two audience score, but they rallied, they really have, and now we're at 3% on audience score. So they're, they're really coming on strong. Now they could have made a movie again about some other black African queen, but whenever they showed you the pictures of them, you'd be like, she's got a lot of admix, that phenotype showing you, oh, whoops. Then you start finding other things about it and you go, okay, they've already had a lot of influx. 
But then what's going on? Well, they're enslaving their own people, playing chase me, eat me, all these other things. And if they left any of that out, people would be like, no, 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 no. You're not gonna try to make a documentary and then whitewash it, are you? You've tried to say that's what, what white people are doing and then here you go doing it yourself. So she decided to opt out and just say, well, we was Egyptians, we was Cleopatra and shit. And again, I hope this opens up an open dialogue where people are able to talk about this more and then figure out just who was where at what time and why there's actually an impossible feat for a Bantu type person to have even known Egypt existed. Much less snuck over there somehow, much less got into nobility somehow, much less ended up marrying the pharaoh and having the offspring that led to Cleopatra somehow and then that somehow was actually a West Sub-Saharan Bantu. Can you imagine the leaps of stupid I just had to go through to get us there? Anyhow guys, I'm going to let this go, but who knows what our next attempt is going to be. If I was any part of this, I would yank her little shit away from it. There wouldn't be another one come out and be like, and that's it. Well, on three strikes and you're out. Well, the, the, the second one, you fouled up straight in the air and the catcher just caught it like, dink. That was foolish. You're out. Peace.